You're listening to the Counter Culture Mom Show. Our kids are under fire every day with the media and pop culture persuading them to give up their faith and Christian values. Stay tuned now as former Hollywood actress and pop culture expert Tina Griffin helps you counter these messages and safely navigate today's pop culture chaos. Scotty Sachs has 40 years experience in broadcasting, produced a syndicated TV and radio show, negotiated a billion dollars in advertising and sponsorship with all major broadcast TV and radio networks and professional sport leagues from the NFL to the NHL. He created the first online data collection portal in 1999. I'm Tina Griffin. This is the Counterculture Mom Show, and our mission is to expose the lies of the enemy and blast the truth to the masses. Thank you for joining us today as we have fun exposing Hollywood with Scotty Sachs host and CEO of Sovereign Radio. Scotty, long time no see, buddy. How you doing? How you doing, Tina? Mm -hmm. Great to see you. It's a privilege to be a part of your uh, anniversary show. Hey, yes, we are hitting three-year mark on the Counterculture Mom Show. Thank you, everybody out there, for praying and for partnering with us. If you want to donate, head over to counterculturemom.com. We'll get out to the masses. Scotty, let me tell you something, buddy. I think two, three summers ago, we were on tour together trying to save this country, and you said some eye-opening critical info to me on the tour bus and at some of these events where I'm thinking we got to get you on immediately. It's two years later, but this is perfect timing for what you're going to tell us. Um, honored to know you. Thank you for all your hard work in, uh, on the battlefield. People need to know what you're working on. You are the father of a teenage daughter, fitness and sports enthusiast, scuba diver, 10 years of study of global financial system and a worldwide traveler. Scotty, let's just cut right to the chase. How have mainstream media and entertainment been subverted and infiltrated by the CIA? You have to first accept they have infiltrated and subverted. The CIA has indeed infiltrated and subverted. I will share a story where I came across what are called the 4 a.m. talking points. That was the time of day the CIA released the talking points to the media every day for years and years and decades. So they were scripting the mainstream media, every TV network, every radio network, every major news publisher. Wow. And then, of course, as online grew, they grew con total control of big tech. So they've controlled all of big tech, controlled past tense. We don't have enough time to go into who's really in control right now because it's not nothing is what it appears. I can assure you that. But this is a Luciferian cult and uh, how they have changed mainstream media is way back when in the 50s they infiltrated and subverted all the newspaper publishers first then they went on to the radio networks because that was the media the big hit in the 60s where the masses were listening to talk radio i know i grew up on it and um they have managed to work their way through every mainstream media television networks satellite tv all the production the netflix the hulus they're all run by three companies three Basically, they call them investment banking firms. They're the biggest thieves in the world, BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street. These are three firms that own about 90% of everything. And by the way, 90% of all media is owned by six companies in the world. So they approached, the CIA approached the mainstream media and said, we'll pay a few bills. Uh -huh. we'll, be your, we'll be your biggest advertiser supporter, but you'll never see our logo on your network. You'll never even know we're controlling you. And many of them didn't know they were being controlled by the CIA. I met a lot who did not know for years, and I didn't know. Wow. All the signs were there, but I didn't know. It took me, you know, don't think I, at 21, got out of college and understood what I was walking into. Right. Working with people like Johnny Cash and, uh, uh, and, and James Brown and Michael Jordan. Seeing what I saw at Hollywood parties with, on the set of L.A. Law. Just, uh. it, it, it's a... It's a Mishmash of highs and lows, the best and the worst of humanity. Okay. That's how I would characterize it. I have to dig in deep because I remember my Hollywood years going to Hollywood parties. Uh, I was invited to go to the Playboy Mansion, didn't go in it. People were fully clothed out in the front lawn. But the stories I heard, the things that I saw is what gave me the platform for this program and for 25 years of speaking around this globe doing the Hollywood Exposed show. So everything you're saying now makes complete sense. Take us back. Give us a one minute snippet of what you saw on the set of L.A. Law. Well, it was behind the set, actually. It was a party, a Super Bowl party hosted by the cast and crew of L.A. Law, specifically Corbin Burnson, who started the show. 
he was hosting the party, not at his home. He had rented a home for this party. And um, I went to watch a Super Bowl. And because of uh, my friends who worked on the set of L.A. Law, one was a attorney that worked on the show. He represented L.A. Law. And, and his wife was a director of L.A. Law. They keep it all in the family. Trust me. Yes, they do. Um, once, once, once they suck you in. They keep it all in the family, and they use your family as leverage any chance yes. they get. Yes, they do. So, yeah, I mean, let me just say this. The best I've seen in humanity and the worst down to sectanic cultures that involve children that we don't need to get into on a color culture mom. We all know what they've done to the children. And the good news is there are now 10,000 underground tunnels that they used. They had a whole world underground. All you got to do is go listen to Kathy O'Brien she yes. Lived 30, she lived 30 years, first 30 years of her life underground. Her parents were elite bankers. They born her into a sex cult and were swapping her with their friends when she was a baby. That is absolutely that's accurate. How dark, that's how dark it that's is. That's exactly how dark it is. And we had Kathy O'Brien on. I got to meet her in person. I drove down and visited Good. with her a summer or two ago. It was phenomenal, eye opening. And here's what's crazy with that. Everybody has to go watch that episode that we did. It was a doubleheader series with her. And then um, we had another guest on talking about this exact same thing, the sex trafficking and the major MK Ultra. It was for July 2022 is the series. You have to go watch it at counterculturemom.com. You are absolutely correct with that, Scotty. Quick question well, with seen, this. I've, I've seen MK Ultra. I've seen the evidence of the CIA 4 a.m. talking points. Back in 2014, Michael Brown was a pre-George Floyd, same thing, a false flag event. The media spun the narrative he was a good kid, that he had found God, he had stopped dealing drugs, he was got clean, went through rehab. None of that was true. They spun it that he was brutally murdered by the cops for nothing. Well, he, he did a drug deal, he stole some money. He was a bad kid. He, he wasn't anything that the media built up. But anyway, I was at CBS the day after that happened, and I went to lunch with the program and news directors and after lunch the program news director came back he had a memo on his desk he told me to be quiet he picked up the phone called his boss he said hey boss why are you forcing me to use these talking points in this memo when this is not the story we sent our camera you approved the budget to send our best reporter and cameraman to ferguson missouri we got the story and lowdown on michael brown bad kid bad scene the cops probably shouldn't needed to kill him but we weren't there we don't know right but um so his boss told him when he called him if i remember correctly you have two boys to put through college you'll run the talking points in the memorandum wow. i don't care what you saw. i don't care what you saw in the video from our reporter and our and our cameraman forget you ever saw it follow the talking points and use their use their footage uh, without any audio. So you're just faking it, right? So, um, you know, he hung up. He hung up. His boss told him, if you want to put your boys through college, you'll do what I tell you to do. So when I left, I asked him if I could see the memo. He wouldn't let me see it. He said, I can't, I can't show it to you. I, I kind of let it go. And as I was leaving, I turned around and I said, hey, it's just me and you. Let me take a peek, quick peek. At the memo. I don't want to even take a copy. Let me take a quick peek. He said, no, well, I broke him down. He let me take a peek. It was a CIA memorandum. <sighs> and it was the talking points about the Michael Brown story. That he was a good kid. That, and this, so they completely used that as they do to divide and conquer. Yes. So those are events clearly to divide and conquer. Okay. When they, when they bring Jewish people from Israel to the front lines with people supporting Hamas and you put them across from a, 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 a little horse, they're like staring each other down and yelling. That's the media divide and conquer. They bring them together. Most of them are page agitators, as we know, through yes. the George Soros organization. Yes. And this is all, all connected to the media entertainment business. Let me tell you about Johnny Cash. It's a really important story. How much time do we have? Can I tell you, know you another what? story? Yes, you can. And we're going to be doing a short commercial break. Support our sponsors. We have brand new sponsors in the mix. So excited. Scotty, I've got 10 questions. And yes, you have to share another story. More with Scotty right after this. Jay's case is a pack of five antibiotics. 
We put these antibiotics together very purposefully. They were curated in a way that covers the most common as well as the most deadly bacterial infections that you might encounter. In addition, it includes a guidebook to the safe use of the medications that is written in a way that's accessible for most people to be able to look up what their symptoms are and what the proper medication is to take. The idea behind the Jace case is to allow everyone to be better prepared medically, to be empowered to care for themselves. Since the pandemic began, our healthcare industry has had to transform. From receiving medication to physician visits, everything changed. Jace Medical is dedicated to providing proper access to medications before you need them. This protects against issues during travel or disruptions with supply chains, natural disasters, and other emergency situations that have proven to overwhelm our healthcare system. Secure your own supply of medication with ease and peace of mind. Use code TINA for a discount at jacemedical.com. Have you ever wanted to start a charity or ministry? Launching a nonprofit can be time consuming, expensive, and overwhelming. If you have a vision and mission, but don't know where to start or how to raise donations, Capstone Legacy Foundation is your solution. Their ministry charity project allows you to receive tax-free donations without the expense and hassle of forming your own 501c3 and in less than 48 hours. This ministry partnership fund is exactly how Counterculture Ministries got its start, and we grew quickly. Capstone Legacy Foundation handles all your legal and accounting paperwork, allowing you time to develop the ministry and message God gave you. Call Capstone today at 610-688-8890 or check out capstonelegacy.org for more information. And tell them Tina sent you. Partner with Capstone Legacy Foundation to transform our culture for Christ and get your nonprofit started today. Scotty, I couldn't agree with you more. I, let me tell you something. I was a broadcasting student at Cal State Los Angeles heading from Wisconsin Dairy Farm to L.A. I did a 10-year acting career slash broadcasting. One of two students that got a straight A's honor roll student graduating Cal State L.A. I was so passionate about media and film and TV and its influence on teens. And let me tell you something. They also said, watch out for the media trying to create and tell us what to say on air. That's why I left TV broadcasting. They were giving us a script to what to say for the news. And I'm like, I'm going a different direction to share the truth about what I saw firsthand while living in LA. What you're saying is absolutely af accurate. Tell us about the Johnny Cash story. And then I got a couple follow-up questions for you. So I think two quick stories. Johnny Cash, I worked for him over a period of three years. He would not go to meetings with me, whether I was meeting with the record labels or the radio stations I was clearing his show on. He produced a show called Johnny Cash American Folklore. We cleared 200 stations with his show. He got a letter from his record label saying, you don't own the rights to that music that that your syndicator, being me, puts you on 200 radio stations. You don't own the rights, so come and talk to us. They wanted a piece of the action. I, Johnny wouldn't come with me. I said, you just come and sit there and stare at him like this. <laughs> And be intimidating because you're you're like a you're icon. like a mentor. You're an icon and a mentor. He was a mentor for me, so I I really admired him. But anyhow, so I got back from that trip. I negotiated the deal. I was with his wife in a green room. He was doing a concert when I flew back. It was a quick meeting in L.A. Quick back. We got it done in 30, 40 minutes, if I remember correctly. They got six percent. They started at twenty. I was happy with the six. I <laughs> believe me. Uh, and Johnny was really appreciative. But Johnny wouldn't tell me why he wouldn't go to meetings. So I backdoored him. I went to his wife, June Carter Cash, and I asked her, why won't Johnny go to meetings? Well, she had friends and family around, so she looked around and she put up her finger and gave me the sh sign, and she said, because they're a Luciferian satanic cult, they worship Lucifer and Satan. Unreal. And I asked her to repeat it. She said it. You know, that night I thought a lot about it. I then subsequently asked Johnny, okay, June spilled the beans. You say they're a Luciferian cult. What do you mean? And he said, Scott is son. He called me son. Son, I've seen things I wouldn't talk to you about. I'll maybe send you a, 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 a note or two, but you have to do your own homework, son. I'm not going to talk about the evil that is on us in the spiritual war wind and these Luciferian evil people. And that's all I got to say about that, son. So it's for real. Now, when you consider the people he's talking about are the men who've run the world, the 13 bloodline families that are the bankers. Yep. And the media, the media has been controlled by these people for so long that in 1989, Peter Jennings told me over dinner, he was drinking. I was not. I got to 
a point where I asked him about my grandfather, why I didn't like him. He throws stuff at the TV, my grandfather. He even flicked a live cigar, but he said, Peter Jennings is an anti-Semite Jew hater. My grandfather escaped a concentration camp from Hitler because he was a Polish Jew. Wow. But he got, out, he got out through the Red Cross, he, you know, and he made it to America. And, you know, here I am. So uh, <clears throat> a great man became a Chicago police. Wow. But um, the point is, I told Peter Jennings, why did my grandfather hate you? He said you were a Jew hater, that you were an anti-Semite. Peter Jennings' answer was astounding. He said, well, first of all, your grandfather's a perceptive man. I don't hate Jews. I, I'm not an anti-Semite. He said, but when I, was a ho when I was a rookie, I didn't get hotel rooms. I got a host family. And my host family was an Arabic Palestinian family, very middle class. And they broke bread with them for I broke bread with them for 18 months. I suffered human emotion called sympathy. I sympathized for their cause. So your grandfather was perceptive. He said, it doesn't matter, Scotty, because everything you see, see and hear on TV is a media and a construct to fit an agenda. I yep. said, would you, would you repeat that? He said, it's a media construct and a narrative to fit an agenda. I said, so what you say doesn't matter? He said, no, but you're Peter Jennings. You've got the most people watching your news than any newscast in the world, which he did. He had 14, 15 million homes listening to him. No, no newsman in the modern day gets 15 million except Tucker Carlson right now. Right. It's about the only one. And a couple of professional athletes who are icons that Hollywood and professional athletes have been used blackmailed and bribed to, to play out their woke agenda. You know it and I know it. Yep. Uh, this is unbelievable. Um, and, and you know what? It blows my mind how God has each theme line up and fit perfectly with other themes we just did. Micah Van Hus was just on in early May. Check out his doubleheader series. We also talk about the Georgia Guidestones with Sheila Holm. And he goes into detail about the bloodlines, the Luciferians, who's running the globe, and the tie-in with the End Times, Battle of Armageddon. It blows my mind. So what you just said, once again, if people are interested in that, you made a, a, a jaw-dropping statement. They can get more information by watching his episode series. Okay, can we quickly go back, and you can answer this beast in like 30 seconds because I have so many questions I want to ask you. When you were at the party, Super Bowl party for LA Law, I just want to go back for two seconds. Are you telling me that they were doing something heinous, Luciferian, child sacrifice-ish? No. Like, okay. No, 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 no child sacrifice. Okay, what, what they were doing is kind of the next level, adrenochrome. They were okay. doing it behind closed doors. They had a Coke room. They had a weed room. They had a room for everything. There was an orgy room. I was there to watch the Super Bowl. There were all these rooms. <sighs> One of them is adrenochrome. The interesting thing is I didn't pay much attention to it because I really didn't know what was going on. I didn't quite understand it. I later learned from my associate who invited me to the party, who was an attorney to the show, that uh, what Andrina Chrome really was. And in order to prove, prove it was real, I went down the rabbit hole and I was able to get to L.A., meet the contact who sold the Andrina Chrome, and it was staring me in the face in the garage of an L.A. downtown parking lot. Oh, my gosh. How can this just and be a I, one I episode series? I would offer series? A, a vial for $1,800. Oh. So now I know the distribution side. So I, I've seen it used at parties. I've seen people come out of the room. They're in, in another world. And Drenochrome is <clears throat> essentially the adrenalized blood of a child. Anywhere from six months old. I, I've heard three months old. But let's say six months old to six years. And they torture the kid, get the adrenaline way up. It's not good adrenaline, but that's the whole point. It's the demons coming out of that poor child. They beat the kid. It's, 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 it's a demonic act. We know that. Yep. You know, the, 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 the point is the adrenochrome, they get this kid to its heightened state of fear, and then they extract the kid's blood. Now, they process it in a lab with something else. That's I've never done any research about what's in those vials. But remember, I saw a vial up close. Guy's in the front seat of my car, sitting in the passenger seat. I'm in the driver's seat. I played dumb like, oh, I forgot my wallet. I was going to record it, Tina, but I <sighs> I chickened out. I thought we were meeting in a park, and I was have been comfortable in public. Yeah. He made, me, he made me meet him in a dark garage. He knew exactly where this garage was. It wasn't even a pay garage. It was a building. He, I think he had an office or something in there. Oh my but gosh, Scotty. In his garage. So I turned, I turned the mic and the camera off. I didn't want to chance anything, but he was very candid. He remembered uh, my name. He knows 
our, my connection came from that party years back because this was many years later. I went down the rabbit hole. Once I, you know, I I'm having an anniversary this month. It's my fourth, your third. We, you know, we were right hot off the tour when we started to grow our shows. Yes, and uh, mine's a little different. I broadcast from the belly of the beast to mainstream media on. AM talk radio stations. I We have to talk about that. This is part one. We're going to do a second commercial break, Scotty. When we come back, we're going to talk about where we can track you down in media and more right after this. Is there a Christian alternative to Instagram? Stick around and find out. For Christians scrolling through Instagram, some reels, photos, and videos can be less than edifying. A lot of Christians have grown frustrated with the lack of options for social media platforms that align with their beliefs. Others may just be tired of getting sucked into the algorithm and are looking for social media alternatives with other believers. The answer to your question is Tuvu. Tuvu is an awesome Christian alternative to Instagram where you can share photos, videos, Bible verses, and more with fellow believers. So what is Tuvu like? Let's take a look. Tuvu is more than social media. It's a community. The Tuvu community is full of like-minded individuals who share your values and beliefs. When you join Tuvu, you'll be able to connect with people who understand you and your faith. So what are you waiting for? Go to tuvu.com slash Tina for your first 30 days free. That's tuvu.com slash Tina for 30 days free. Dr. Daniel Taylor is a specialist with 40 years of experience in examining bodies. In almost 90% of cases, he reports finding terrible parasitic infestation. These deadly parasites often live in the lungs, heart, liver, even the brain. Their colonies inhabit internal organs, and the larvae feed, on the tissues of living people. That's why Sanus One created our one-of-a-kind wellness and bio-cleanse formula, that attacks disease and parasites that can cripple your immune system and destroy your vital organs and their toxic waste can paralyze or impede your entire system. Our Sanus One formulas are designed for preemptive wellness and can bring dramatic results even for post-parasitic infestation. Protect your health and feel good again with Sanus One Wellness and True Health Formula. Visit us at sanusone.com. That's sanusone.com. Hey everybody, let's team up to shake up to wake up your neighborhood. I would be honored to come to your school, church, summer camp, prison, and any other loving or dangerous environment to share the truth about today's pop culture with videos, celeb quotes, video game footage, personal stories from my years in the Hollywood Hills, you name it, it's a wild spicy message. Teens and tweens won't look at entertainment the same way again, and your arguments regarding what your children can and can't watch will become less and less. I will give them the dirt to prove that Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy, and God has much more in store for your kids. This Hollywood Exposed program talks about the negative side of Hollywood, but I also give many positive entertainment options for you and your household. The process is easy. Just fill out the short booking form on our website by clicking on the Book Tina tab at CounterCultureMom.com, and our team will get back to you within minutes. Once again, CounterCultureMom.com. Let's work together to show the evidence needed for our kids to make wise media choices that will uplift and encourage them to live a life of integrity. Scotty, you're blowing my mind right now. Everything you said, 110%, we could talk for 15 hours about our experiences living and working in Hollywood with what you just dropped for the bomb. Anybody out there who wants more information about uh, the satanic ritual abuse that happens in, in Hollywood and around this globe, Jimmy Toro came on for a doubleheader series. You got to watch his episodes, Jaw Dropping, right here, April, is when we aired those programs. Go to counterculturemom.com. Scotty, before we let you go, can you tell us where to go to check you out on the radio? It's Sovereign Radio. Dot net, correct? Yeah, it's SovereignRadio.net, but I want to leave your listeners with this thought. Uh, they can follow me broadcasting from the belly of the beast of mainstream media. Go to SovereignRadio.net. There are microphones on the site you can click on to get you to the shows. If you missed the show on Saturday or Sunday on radio stations in Texas and California, you can hear the show on Google Play, uh, iHeart, and Apple Podcast, and on Rumble and Roku. I'm on the Grassroots Warrior Network. Uh, I'm up to uh, some pretty good uh, fun, and uh, I'm blessed with great guests um, from General Flynn to uh, Michelle Bachman's coming on, You know the, the, the Republican congresswoman from Minnesota that ran for president. So you and I are um, doing the same thing, fighting the same uh, side of the spiritual war, and that's the thought I want to leave your listeners with. We are in a spiritual war above Absolutely. all. Absolutely. 
I assure everybody we're winning the information war. So get down on a knee and pray every day. Uh, meditate. Find some time to uh, get in touch with the Lord and continue to ask for his help because I believe we're winning every important war, Tina, and that's the hope I want to give everybody. You are absolutely phenomenal. I loved our part one. I have to have you on for part two. There's about 16 more questions we got to get to. There's, you you're it. blowing my Anytime. mind. Everybody out there, watch Anytime. all four episodes in the Counterculture Mom this week as we expose Hollywood. Wow, mind blowing. And I thought I knew a lot about the bombs uh, that were going on. There's a lot more going off than what I thought. More with Scotty. Make sure you check out the second part episode and go to counterculturemom.com to watch all these episodes. Share them with the masses. People got to wake up. They don't have the knowledge. We can help them. Thank you so much, Scotty. I'll see you here in about two seconds. Thanks for joining us for the Counterculture Mom Show with your host, Tina Griffin. For over two decades, Tina has traveled the globe exposing how pop culture is glamorizing harmful behaviors without showing the consequences and how these messages are wreaking havoc on today's youth. Through radio, TV, podcasts, and our app, Counterculture Ministries is reaching millions every week with a biblically-based message for hope for today's teens and their parents. But we can't do that without your faithful prayer and financial investment. If you appreciate the ministry of Tina and Counterculture Ministries, would you prayerfully consider a generous gift right now? We have a donor matching dollar for dollar. You can give securely online by visiting counterculturemom.com or by texting the word DONATE to the number 55444. That's counterculturemom.com or text the word DONATE to the number 55444. Every dollar is doubled. If you love this show, you can stay up to date on the latest critical issues affecting your family by catching all of our weekly episodes with resource links, signing up for our e-newsletter, and downloading our Counterculture Mom app, where you get timely pop culture alerts. Visit counterculturemom.com for more details. And be sure to join us next week for another edition of the Counterculture Mom Show with Tina Griffin, where we are rewriting Hollywood script for our kids.